We're now going to start to talk about least squares problems. Um, so I've labeled things, things here least squares one. We're actually going to see two types of least squares problem, uh, incredibly closely related. Um, and I don't know, this would typically be called a least norm uh, problem. And it's incredibly useful. This is the uses of this go way beyond. Uh, anything we're going to learn about in this course or indeed in control in general. Least squared methods, least squares methods are used almost everywhere um, for solving engineering problems. Um, and I guess the main reason is they provide a very simple but quite general class of optimization problems which have an analytical solution. And it's having this analytical solution that is, I guess, fundamental to a lot of their utility and it's kind of the, the magic of least squares. Um, so we'll just start off by talking about the problem and then we'll present the solution for the matrix case. Um, as we'll actually see, these ideas go beyond uh, linear systems of matrix equations and in fact can handle all sorts of exotic objects and that we'll use them to solve some simple optimal control problems. Um, but we'll start with the matrix case just to explain everything and what everything means. Um, so we're given uh, matrix that's dimensions m by n and some vector y which has got m entries and we're asked to solve this problem here. So what's, what's going on here? Well we want to find the minimum norm, so this two lines here, this is notation for norm um, and it's norm is a kind of a way to formalize the concept of the size of a vector. So if you like, we want to minimize the size of the vector x such that y is equal to ax. So um, we'll clear up some of this notation a bit more in a minute, but um, the situation we're in here is that our... Why doesn't that work? Anyway, maybe this one will work. Um, our matrix A is fat. It's short and fat. And what does that mean? Well, it means that for any y, there will be likely lots of vectors x that solve the equation y is equal to ax. And we want to find the smallest one. So a is short and fat. Um, that means that m is, well, let's say less than or equal to n. And we're also going to assume that the rank of the matrix A is equal to M. So we've got lots and lots of columns, but we've got, but M of them are independent, or equivalently, we have a, the matrix A has M independent rows. Um, so that sort of almost explains everything that we need. What's this arg min? Well, min means we want to minimize this, the norm or the size of X. Arg just means rather than looking at the value of the, the, the minimum value of the size of the norm of x, we want to know what is the x that minimizes this. So the argument that minimizes the norm of x. So, so if we just had min here, the output of this min function would be the size of the norm of x for the x that makes this as small as possible. If we put arg min, we just get the, the actual x that makes this as small as possible. So this is short and fat, and just to give a few more details, when we're talking about matrices uh, or vectors x, this norm is just x transpose times x, all square rooted. The square roots are annoying, so we'll just square everything. Uh, so what is x transpose x? This is just x1 squared plus x2 squared, and so on. So you see, if we had the square root, this would just be giving you the length of the vector x. Um, so we're, we're trying to minimize the length of the vector x subject to the fact that it solves the equation y is equal to ax. And this is the first type of least squares problem. Um, so why is this nice? Well, it has an analytical solution. What is the analytical solution? It is x star is equal to a transpose and then this is all multiplied by a, a transpose inverse, y. So this is just some matrix. It's going to have dimensions n by m. And as long as the 
rank, this matrix A has full rank, this inverse will exist. There's a generalization of this, um, so we can call what's we can put what's called the more Penrose pseudo inverse in here, if this condition isn't satisfied. But um, I, let's not get into that. So under the assumption that our matrix A has got full rank, um, this is the analytical solution. And what's the sort of intuitive picture to have in your mind here? Well, let's just draw, let's suppose that our vector x is two-dimensional. So we've got dimension x1 and dimension x2. So what is um, this, and, and let's say we are in the situation where a is short and fat, I mean here n is two so m is going to be one. So let's say y, or it could be two, but let's say it's one. Um, so y is just a number and A is a matrix with one row and two columns. So this equation then becomes, in this case, um, we'd have Y is equal to A1 X1 plus A2 X2. And this is just the equation of a line. Uh, so if Y is fixed, A1 is fixed and A2 is fixed, this is just the equation of a line. And so in our X1 X2 coordinates, this will just correspond to a line, say this. So this is y is equal to ax. What does that mean? Well, it means that every value of x, so that vector x, that vector x, all of these vectors x, these all give a solution to the equation y is equal to ax. So because the matrix A is fat, we have many values of x that solve the equation y is equal to ax. And we're interested in the shortest one. So what does that correspond to on our picture? Well, it corresponds to uh, this solution here, I guess. I'm going to draw it on in another color. So this is the shortest solution. Note we've got this right angle here. So the value of x that solves the equation, y is equal to ax, which has got the smallest size, is precisely the one that goes from the origin to our line of solutions and makes a right angle to it. So this vector here, this is our x star. This is the solution to our least squares problem. And the claim of least, least squares is that we can equivalently find x star just by uh, computing this thing here. So this will equivalently give us our point x star. Um, so let's just... Well, we'll derive this in a second. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, let's just start deriving it. So this is what you need to remember, if you like. For these types of least norm, least squares problems, the opt optimal solution is given by A transpose, A, A transpose inverse, multiplied by our vector Y, and it corresponds to picking this vector X. So the, the solution that's orthogonal to the origin on our plane of or our line of possible solutions here and in more general cases we'd get a plane or some higher dimensional subspace we just find the one that makes a right angle uh, um, to it okay so how could we go about characterizing um, this solution here and my claim is that we want to find the point or that, or that x, the op, our optimal point x star is the point that is orthogonal to the vector x minus x star in our solution set. So our solution set is the values of x on this line, and we want to find the value of x. Or the value of the optimal solution is the value x star that satisfies this property here. So, so what's that on our picture? Well, all of these general lines, these are vectors x. So what's x minus x star? x minus x star is that vector minus that, which is just that vector there, or equivalently, it's this vector here. So here, this is x minus x star for values of x that solve y is equal to ax. So our condition for having found the optimal point is that x star is orthogonal to 
every other choice of x on our set of possible solutions to y is equal to ax. What else do we know? Um, so, so this is sort of what we're trying to find. And we also know that given any two points, in fact, but given a general x and given x star, we must have that a x minus x star is equal to zero. Why is this? Well, every point on our solution line satisfies y is equal to a x. So if x and x star are solutions to this equation, then ax is equal to ax star, or equivalently, ax minus xr is equal to zero. OK, so what's this condition here? Well, for these two vectors to be orthogonal, we need their inner product to be equal to zero. So we know we'll have found this orthogonality condition if we can show that x star transpose multiplied by x minus x star is equal to zero. So this is our orthogonality condition. And now let's just show that indeed this satisfies our orthogonality condition. So let's just multiply things out a bit. So x star transpose is equal, well x star is equal to this, which means that x star transpose is just equal to um, y transpose, and then we have a a transpose to the minus one. Uh, what am I? Oh yeah, and then a. So that's just x star transpose, and now we multiply this by x minus x star. And you can indeed see straight away from here that this equals zero. And so if x star is given by this, then these two, we get this orthogonality condition, which is exactly what we're expecting to find uh, to be the property of our optimal solution. So we've established this here, and now we're going to use this to show that x star is indeed the optimal solution. In fact, we kind of already have because we have this geometric interpretation of what this means, but let's just uh, kind of show it the long way uh, so that we're completely confident. Um, so th this is the quantity that we're interested in minimizing. So let's say we have any point x. So the norm of any value x is equal to well, we can just do the old trick of add and then subtract something away. So that's equal to x star plus x minus x star, all normed. And what does this equal? Well, our norm, yeah, let's put the squares in and we don't have to write any square roots. So what is this thing here? Well, this is just defined as the thing inside transposed multiplied by itself. So what do we get? Well, we get that this is x star plus x minus x star transpose all multiplied by x plus x minus x star. And then let's just multiply this out, treating these as kind of combined terms. So what do we get? We get that x star, we get x star x, and there's a transpose there. And then we get x star transpose x minus x star plus x minus x star transpose x plus uh, x minus x star transpose x minus x star. And now this is when we use our observation from up here. These terms here are just equal to zero. This one's zero, and then this one's just the transpose of that one. Um, there's supposed to be a star there and there. So that equals zero. Um, did I get any anything else wrong? Don't think so. Okay, so because of yeah, our orthogonality condition, which corresponds exactly to this condition here guarantees that these cross terms are equal to zero. And so we just carry on. We find that this is equal to 
x star transpose x star plus x minus x star transpose x minus x star. And the key thing to note is, is that this quantity here, this is greater than zero unless x is equal to x star. So we know if we set x equal to x star, the value of the norm will be equal to x star transpose x star. And we know that for any other choice of x, it will be larger. And so this in fact shows that, um, yeah, so, so this shows that the solution is unique as well. Because um, the only value of x for which this here is equal to zero is x equal to x star. And so there we have it, we've derived the least norm solution to the least squares problem. Um, the key punchline here is that it's given by this, this, we have this analytical solution that can be written in terms of the matrix A. Um, but it's definitely important uh, when we start to think about how we might generalize these ideas that you have this geometrical picture in mind. So what what's going on here? Well, we have some linear equation with many possible solutions, and we're trying to pick the one that is closest to our subspace of possible solutions. And that corresponds to picking the solution x star that is at a right angle with every other solution in our possible subspace of solutions. And that's this condition here. And how were we able to characterize that? We were able to characterize that through taking this inner product between our optimal solution and points on uh, the solution set. Um, so we have these ingredients of norms and inner products characterizing the solution to our least squares problem. And actually, this will allow us to generalize these ideas beyond the solution to these matrix equations, so with A as a matrix, and we'll be able to actually make A be something that maps functions into vectors or functions into functions, and, and you can really take this idea very, very far, and actually it's exactly this idea that underpins um, the solution to uh, yeah, the most powerful optimal control um, design methods. Um, and as we said, least squares appears all over the place. I and mean, this is an extremely general and powerful tool. We've seen how it applies um, when we have linear equations with matrices and vectors, but it actually goes way beyond this as well. Um, so this is our first type of least squares problem, and now we'll use it to solve a simple optimal control problem.